Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve power of x to the power of n or however you want to, you know, say this title. And before we solve this, I just want to mention, so there's a ton of dislikes on this, but to be honest, I do feel that this is a pretty fair question. I think this is actually one of those rare medium problems that you can solve even if you haven't seen the problem before, you can mostly solve this problem. It's a little bit more tricky, I guess, if you want to, you know, x to the power of n, well, we could have 2 to the power of 10, or we could have 2 to the power of negative 10, because actually in this case, n can be negative, even x can be negative, and actually x can even be a decimal, but that doesn't really change the problem, actually. Like, you know, 0 0.5 to the power of 10, it doesn't really change the problem because the math works out the same. The power itself can't be a decimal, right? We can't have 10.5. That would make this problem a little bit more difficult, but we actually don't have to deal with that case. So I do feel that this problem is mostly doable. It definitely does need a little bit of math background. So if you don't like math, yeah, you might not like this problem. But let's just refresh ourselves. So let's take a look at this first example, 2 to the power of 10, right? So what exactly does that mean again? Do you remember from your high school, middle school, college math or whatever? Well, 2 to the power of 10 is just basically a short way of writing 2 times 2 times 2, you know, all the way. Uh, 10 times basically, right? We'll multiply 2 10 times. So uh, when you think about it, this problem sounds pretty dang easy, right? You know, we could apply the same logic to the second example, 2.1 times 2.1 times 2.1, right? Three times. Okay, but what about negative exponents? You might not remember from your math class, but negative exponent basically means you know, the same thing. So in this case, 2 to the power of negative 2 is still 2 times two, right? Two times, you do. You still do it the same number of times. It's negative two, so we'll do it two times. Uh, only difference is you actually take this number and then put it in the denominator and you take one divided by that number, right? So it, that's literally just it. Negative exponents are literally just taking that big number that we take, putting it in the denominator, one divided by whatever that number we calculate. So now that you know the math behind this problem, uh, it's pretty easy to solve this problem in linear time, right? Can you see why? Because we can just do a while loop, a for loop, whatever you want to do, uh, n times, right? So time complexity is going to be n. We just take x, multiply it, n times. Now, the problem is, and I'm guessing maybe this is why this problem got so many dislikes, I don't think this actually passes the test cases. Why doesn't it? Because there's a better solution. It's not a common sense solution, but it is something that you can logically figure out. So if we're taking a number x or 2, whatever you want to call it, multiplying it out 10 times, is there a shorter way to do that? Is there a, I don't want to, you know, ruin the problem. So if you want to try to figure it out on your own, go ahead. But I'm going to mention the keyword right now. Is there a divide and conquer way that we could solve this problem? So here we have 2 times 2 written out, I think, 10 times, right? So is there any repeated work you're noticing? Well, when the way math works out, multiplication, isn't it true that we don't have to do this 10 times? We could just do it 5 times, right? 5 times, half of it, right? Just do half the work. And then, you know, once we calculate this number, which in reality is 2 to the power of 5, can't we just then say, okay, we have that number, 2 to the power of 5, and then just multiply it by itself? In that case, we're eliminating half the work. Yeah, we can do that. But why stop there? Can't we also further break this down as well? Well, we can't divide it by 2, so it's going to be a little bit more annoying, but we can say that and actually, let me rewrite this to say, okay, this equals 2 to the power of 10, right? That's the result we're looking for. Okay, so then how do we get 2 to the power of 5? Well, you can say, uh, you know, take the exponent and divide it by 2. Well, we get 2 if we round down, right? We're going to do integer division. 5 divided by 2, what's that going to be? That's going to be 2, right? So what's the equivalent way to write this by kind of eliminating half the work? Well, we could say 2 to the power of 2, right? We could calculate this value, multiply it by itself, right? But this is just 2 to the power of 4, so we're going to need one last 2 value here, right? So we still did eliminate half the work, and then we just had a constant value here, right? This is a, this is a constant value, isn't it? Th there's no exponent over here, so this is going to be easy. Uh, and then here, you know, cutting the work in half. And we can keep doing this, right? 2 to the power of 2 is just 2 to the power of 1 times 2 to the power of 1. 
And yeah, that is pretty much the entire logic of this problem. It's not too complicated, is it? The one thing to keep in mind, though, is what is going to be the time complexity? Is it still going to be linear? No, because suppose we had a exponent n, and how many times can we divide this value by 2 until it finally equals 1? Well, you know, if you're familiar with what logarithms mean, that's basically the definition of a logarithm, right? How many times can we divide a number n, or let's say x, right? How many times can we divide a number n uh, by 2? That's the base of the logarithm. How many times can we divide it by 2? Well, this is the time complexity, right? This is what that value is going to be. Overall, this is the big O time complexity. If you're familiar with logarithms, you were probably able to recognize that immediately. If not, hopefully you can see it sort of right now. And the last thing is, so since we are doing this with a divide and conquer approach, it's going to lend itself to recursion. Right, because when we're trying to solve this problem, 2 to the power of 10, we can't solve it, right? We have no idea what it is. So we're going to solve that sub problem, right? 2 to the power of 5 first. Once we solve this, then it's easy to calculate 2 to the power of 10, right? Because we can just take this value and multiply it by itself, and then we'll get the result we're looking for, right? So this is going to be like a recursive chain. It's not like a, a double tree, right? It's not going two ways. It's literally just a single a chain of recursion. And then finally, when we get to our base case, suppose... You know, we had a base case down here somewhere, then we're going to be done. Then we're going to start popping back up each uh, layer of that recurs recursive, uh, you know, whatever tree or whatever you want to call it. So that's the main logic. But one thing with recursion you don't want to forget is the base case. You don't want it to run forever. So what's the base case with exponents? If you ever raise a number, you know, five, let's say to the power of zero, any number raised to the power of zero is always going to be one. So one base case for us is going to be if n equals zero, then return one. Okay, so that's a good base case. Now, this isn't really a base case because x is never going to be modified, right? We're going to be dividing n by 2, but x is always going to stay the same. But if we ever got an input such that x was 0, can we raise the value 0 to any exponent? What happens if we raise 0 to an exponent? It's just going to equal 0 no matter what. So that's a base case. We can return 0, right? If we got an input such as 0 to the power of 10, we don't even need to do recursion. We don't even need to do, you know, waste our time doing a solution. We can immediately return 0. So why waste our time? This is another base case. So these are the two base cases that you have to worry about. That's pretty much it. So let's go hop our way into the code now. The code now, and one thing I just realized is I didn't really mention how we were going to handle negative exponents, but like I mentioned at the beginning, you know, x to the power of n is basically, or, you know, to the power of negative n, or if it's a negative value, is just equal to 1 divided by x to the power of positive n, right? So uh, the way I'm going to handle the negative exponent case is I'm not even going to worry about negative exponents until the end. So regardless of what n is, I'm going to take the absolute value of it. If n is a negative number, we're not going to calculate negative numbers. We're going to calculate x to the power of positive n no matter what. And then at the end, we're just going to take that value that we calculate and then say 1 divided by that. That's the easiest way that I can think of to handle it. You can do it differently if you want, but I'm going to show you how to do that now. So since we are going to handle it in that case, we're actually going to need to do like a wrapper. So this helper function is just kind of a wrapper so that we don't ever pass a negative exponent into it. So we're going to pass the exact same variables x and n. And then once we're done, so let me just show you how I'm going to actually call this function. So we're going to call our helper function, right? We're going to pass in x. X can be whatever it wants, but n is the exponent. We never want to pass in a negative exponent, so I'm just going to take absolute value of n and then get the result of whatever it was, right? But now, before we actually return the result, what if n was negative? Well, first of all, if n was positive, then we can just go ahead and return the result, right? So if n is greater than or equal to zero, uh, then we're going to go ahead and return the result. Uh, otherwise, if it's a negative, if the exponent was negative, then we want to say 1 divided by the result, right? That's the main, just the math behind it, right? And now we can get into the recursive function. What did I mention a couple minutes ago? It was the base case, right? Remember, if x is 0, then we are going to be returning 0, right? Because it's going to, no matter what exponent we have, X, you know, the, the expression is going to be zero. The other base case was if n is equal to zero, meaning the exponent is equal to zero. If that's the case, 
we are going to return one no matter what, right? Any value raised to an exponent of zero is always going to be one. Uh, so now we can actually get into the logic. So we're going to say, we're going to call our, our recursive function. So we're going to call the helper and we're going to pass in x. x is always going to stay the same. But remember, the n, uh, the exponent is going to be divided by 2. So integer division, right? So you're probably thinking, OK, if we had n is 4, right? Some, it's an even number. Then we divide it by 2. Then n is going to be equal to 2, right? But what if we had a odd number? Right? What if we had n equals 5? Then if we divide it by 2, n is going to end up equaling uh, 2 in this case. Right, So we have to handle that because if we... Uh, you know, if, if it's an odd number, we have to handle it slightly differently, right? If it's an odd number, we have to multiply it by x one more time, right? Because x times x to the power of 2 times x to the power of 2 is going to be equal to x to the power of 5, right? Because the helper is, is what's going to calculate x to the power of 2, and then we're going to multiply these two. We're going to multiply the value by itself, and then we're going to have one more x at the end. Let me show you uh, without actually... You know, I might as well show you what we're talking about. So we're going to get the result from our help, help, helper. We're going to take result and multiply it by itself. And then before we return the result, we're going to say, don't just return the result, return x multiplied by the result if the exponent was odd. How do we know if the exponent was odd? Well, we can say if n modded by 2 is, uh, you know, non-zero. So if this is the case, we can return x times the result. If it's not the case, that means we had an even exponent. That means we can just directly return the result, right? We just we took the, the result of this, right? And then we multiplied it by itself. And then we can return that, right? That's the entire problem. That's all the logic. Let's submit it, make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yeah, it's pretty efficient. It's about as efficient as you can get. There's one little trick I guess I'll show you. Probably most people won't care about it, but you can get rid of this line. If you remember from algebra, you know, how exponent multiplication works and stuff like that, uh, instead of passing an x here, we can actually pass x multiplied by x, and then we won't need that line of code that I had below. So this will basically return, uh, you know, x to the power of n divided by 2 multiplied by itself. The wording might be confusing, but the math is uh consistent, right? The math does work out. I'll run it to show you that it works. As you can see on the left, yes, it does work and it's slightly more efficient, but I don't think that's really necessary. That's just if you kind of like algebra and you know want to do something fun. Hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.